in small spaces. Charlotte Laws, everyone. I am 4 foot 11, almost a midget. A midget is 4, 10 and under. I am bigger than a bread basket, but smaller than a fire hydrant. I actually sort of like a fire hydrant because dogs are attracted to me. I'm originally from Atlanta, Georgia, and now I live in Los Angeles. Do we have anyone here from the South? So sorry to hear. It's so embarrassing. It must be embarrassing. It's embarrassing for me. It's always been embarrassing. People say, where are you from? And instead of saying Georgia, I say, I'm from Georgia. They say, where are you from? I say, Georgia. Then they think I'm a retarded midget. <laughs> where I'm from, they say, oh, so you're a Georgia peach. I say, no, I'm a Georgia potato. Potatoes don't come from Georgia. I'm adopted. <laughs> Actually, I was adopted by a couple who had 13 dogs, so I had 13 brothers and sisters. Waiting in line for the bathroom was a pain. We only had one tree. <laughs> My dad would take me to the park, and you know, it was okay, but there was always slobber on that tennis ball. And then he'd follow me around with the pooper scooper. <laughs> Last time I went back to Atlanta, one of my friends came up to me, and she looked me up and down, and she said, your socks are falling down. And I said, oh, well, these are leg warmers. They're fashionable in Los Angeles. Looks to me like your socks are falling down. <laughs> People in Georgia are so fashion conscious. Then another friend of mine comes up and she goes, Missy. And she called me Missy because that was my nickname. I know it's a dog's name. She said, Missy, I can't believe you went all the way across the country all by yourself. I said, yes, it was a long trip. And my donkey had to stop for water. <laughs> I'm from the wealthy part of Atlanta where I went to the private school. We belonged to the country club. But you couldn't just have money. You had to have old money. Old money was good, new money was bad. So the golden Atlanta seemed to be to get dead presidents from dead relatives so you could leave a dead existence. <laughs> That's why I was dead set on getting out of there. <laughs> I realized I was different at the mall. And on this particular day, I drove to the mall, I parked. A policeman came up and said, ma'am, you can't park here unless you're handicapped. I said, officer, you've never even seen me play golf. <laughs> so then he started giving me a ticket, and I said, I actually started crying, and I said, but I'm a midget, and my socks are falling down. <laughs> so then I go to the mall and meet my girlfriends, and our routine every single weekend was to go to the mall and criticize anything that was not preppy or conservative in the storefront windows. So I go in and they're looking at this long gold sequin gown with a plunging neckline. And my first girlfriend says, oh, how gaudy. And the second friend says, oh, gaudy, gaudy, gaudy. And I said, oh, God, that's gorgeous. <laughs> my biggest accomplishment came in my senior year of high school. And you know, they have the list of the, the girl that's the prettiest or the student most likely to succeed. Well, I was voted the best dressed. And this was really exciting because it was a uniform school. I went, to, I went to the school for 12 years. I never owned a uniform. The teachers didn't even call me Missy. They called me Miss Out of Uniform. They missed that question, Miss Out of Uniform. And everybody in my senior class had a black BMW because that was the preppiest car. So I went out and got a motorcycle. And I rode the motorcycle until I realized there are only three types of people who have motorcycles. Those who have been busted up, those who are busted up, and those who are going to be busted up. <laughs> That's how I like to be a midget. <laughs> so my dad says to me, Missy, it's not classy to ride a motorcycle. I said, Dad, it takes money to be classy. <laughs> That's how I like to be a midget. I painted it pink, and now it's out of uniform, too. <laughs> most about Atlanta was the prejudice. And actually the worst kind of prejudice, which 
I fight today because it's the most widespread speciesism, which is prejudice against animals, because humans arrogantly believe they're superior to non-humans. But in Georgia, it was racism, and I was fighting it every day against my family and my friends. They'd use the N-word all the time, and I'd stomp out of the room. My best friend called me an N-lover every single day, and she was this very religious Christian who every day told me I was going to hell. So you can see why she was my best friend. I had to know somebody who was going to heaven. I mean, connections are important. <laughs> Plus, everybody knows God has old money. <laughs> the only black person that I knew was my maid. His name was Richard Baker. He was a man maid. And every single day after school, we'd sit in the kitchen, he'd eat his banana and mayonnaise sandwiches, and he'd tell me about all the affairs he was having. In addition to women, he'd poke holes in lampshades. So he'd be cleaning the lampshade, go boop, poke the hole through, and then he'd try to hide it. And he'd blame it, blame it on lampshade moths, M-O-T-H-S. Lampshade, Missy, you had lampshade moths. And of course the rumor gets all over school. He goes, oh, Missy got a lampshade moth. Woo, no more Miss House, she's got a lampshade moth. <laughs> lampshade moths can also be the target of discrimination or speciesism. So in closing, I'd like to say, please don't discriminate against my brothers and sisters, because if you do, my parents are just going to feel sorry for them and keep giving them all the good chew toys. Thank you. <laughs>